Old Northumbrian custom, eh, what, Dick? <laughs> Greeting the bastard. Forgetting him, you mean. That's an old melon one. Half the sprats in the country have got his mark on them. I'd like to have a look at him. Let's hunt him down and you can have his scalp. Huh? With hair. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's hunt the hair! We're going to hunt the bastards! Come on! <laughs> Fun 
me. Go and get yourself a man. Damn nonsense, eh? They won't get near him. Twenty years, it must be. Since he could walk, he's been coming to that mountain just to see me. <laughs> so it's true. Oh. Who's the mother? Don't know. Can't remember. All the same, though. All mine. Don? Don? Go! I'll give it. I'll give it. That's what you get, you devil. <laughs> Expect us to kill the fatted calf for you? Not been away, have I? Huh? Lift up your hearts towards the sanctuary and bless the Lord. Blessed be thou, Lord God, who bring us forth bread from the earth. Amen. Amen. Sharp day, eh? Matthew had to go out with the beasts. And the cold gets on his chest. I didn't mind, Dad. Didn't get that cold. No mind, Matty. You take care. There's one who should have taken care for him. What's the matter, Dad? said unto Cain, Where is Abel, thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? If you want to know where I've been, why don't you just ask? I was up at the peak. Well, that's a fair step, Donald. 
It gave me your oath never to go near that man. I was up on the peak and he was down in the low field. Well, of course, in my... Eat up, then. We can some. I wish I had a couple of his greyhounds. They were eating and drinking too, him and his friends. And women, man. You should have seen a bit titted with him. Have some respect for your mother, or if you cannot, for her, for me. That's what you wanted to wear all along, isn't it? You knew I'd been up at the peak. I think you're more interested in Squire Mallon than I am. This is my house, and you'll not mention that man's name in my house. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. But for shame, for all the world to see. Damn you. Damn you to hell! I'm your father. Aye. Mr. Radlett, father, but you're not me dad. It's your house, and it's your farm. And me mum works in your house, and I'll work on your farm. And I do your work, and I do Matty's work as well. Don't I'm not quarrelling, Matty, I'm telling the truth. You bought a cow and calf by that old bull in the valley. Oh, I never, I never, I never. Oh, oh, oh. No. And you admire the man who did that? No. I don't know what I do or why I do it. I am. have gone up. Well, they live here, don't they? Now, listen. Look, if you leave it tomorrow, you must give them a chance. When you live here, you can go up to bed whenever you like. I don't want to live here. But you like Dick Mallon, don't you? And that father of his has drunk himself to death. But there's no running water or gas lights. Well, it is all closet. Oh. Where I was brought up, there wasn't even then. When you're the lady of high bank, so you can have whatever your father's money can buy you. All right? Now, listen. You are going to marry Nan and be a lady, not to walk in phone shop like them two in there. Very good, very good. Talk you back. Oh, Bring a bottle of brandy up to my room. Where are the Farrington girls? I thought we'd have a game of cards. Hmm? Well, the girls get packed off the room after dinner. The old man treats them like children. Well, anything, just so long as we don't have to spend the evening with those awful women. Eh? I'm supposed to marry Fatty Armstrong. <laughs> Really? Good. <laughs> Some chance. We'll be <laughs> off tomorrow, back to London. Go on, Lennox. It's the last night. Let's double the stakes. Hmm? Right over. Yeah. Oh, Ace is high, we're Ace is high. Ah, Dick! Yeah. I want you. <laughs> Dick! <laughs> don't worry, he won't get away. I don't think much of his friends. Londoners! No damn blood in them. <laughs> Yes. They've lost contact with the land, that's what it's all about. Land. What lies under it? Yes, no damn coal here, worse luck. I've got coals. I want roots. Grandchildren. Family with a name to it. <laughs> Mallon. Dick will give you all your grandchildren. Huh? I never missed. <laughs> Those foreign girls. What obligation? Oh. My wife was a Farrington. Her nieces, hardly any property, my responsibility. Don't worry, Frank. When Dick marries, he'll get high banks, free of all encumbrances. <laughs> Fanny will have a fair settlement. <sighs> what do you want? You ran? Where's Dunn? Taking some brandy up to Mr. Mullen. Oh, is he? <laughs> <laughs> well, you bring us some more port, eh? <laughs> no, wait! Bring us a dozen bottles of champagne! <laughs> then leave! Here, hey, Jack! Your wives ever play jockey. Oh. Jockey? Jockey Summers? <laughs> Where What's jockey? I bought a jockey! That's <laughs> game wrong there, lads! A bit rough. <laughs> 
But the women like it. <laughs> well, clear a space. Eddie, go and get the women in. Come on, jockeys. <laughs> Here it is. Hmm. This Constance? Ugh. Don't be silly, Constance. I hate it. It's good for you. It's good for nervous disorders, anemia, and growing pain. I've stopped growing. I think I've stopped growing. Barbara's drinking hers without any trouble. She needs it. I'm sure Fanny Armstrong was brought up on this. <laughs> Miss Armstrong is a very eligible young lady. Her father has a coal mine. And that's where he found her mum. <laughs> Mary Peel. And my mother's calling us old ladies. Well, they cannot hold a candle to my ladies. Quiet, Mary Peel, or leave the room. Yes, Miss Briggs. Miss Barrington's are proud enough without your help, and we do not talk about our guests. Sir, Uncle Thomas's, not mine. Next year, when Barbara's 21, she will be the lady of High Banks. My cousin will be married before then, Miss Brigmore. And I dare say neither Constance nor I would wish to stay here. Our needs do not always consult our wishes. But your uncle is unlikely to put you out on the moors when you've lived with him for so long. It is disgusting. I don't think there's anything here that I regret leaving. I mean that you and Mary Peel should come and live with us. Thank you. When that time comes, I might have other plans. I don't want to govern this all my life. Aren't you being ungrateful to your Uncle Thomas? They're going tomorrow. It isn't them. Aye, they make no right clutter, that lot. Please, Miss Bigmore, let's go out tomorrow. Let's go as far away as we can tomorrow. I'm sure your uncle will want you to say farewell to his guests. What are they doing? Who gets a bed and never be mine? What do you think they're doing? What people like that do? It's not for us to judge. Well, I'm going to have a look. No, Con Con Constance. Constance! Oh, Marty. Oh, me, not you, eh? Because I had a different dad. Go on. Yeah? What's it feel like? What? Being a bastard. I'm as sick as you are, Marty. These days, what you got won't kill you.
music. Nothing, Miss Brickmore. Something is amusing. <laughs> Write me by telling me what it is. Your sister and I can be amused by it as well. It's what Mary Peel said afterwards. Well, what did Mary Peel say afterwards? He mind that woman wasn't wearing drawers either. <laughs> it's not amusing. I'm very glad we shan't be seeing those people anymore. They'll be gone by the time we get back. Not all of them. So you come down with us. There's a good girl, Constance. Big jump. Or if we can go up to Carfell to see our cottage. No. Anyway, she's busy picking those things. Lichens. It's not fair. Cousin Dick is going to inherit the hall, and all we have is a cottage. I hate it. It's a very nice cottage. Oh, I expect it would be all right for you, Miss Brigmore. What's wrong with her? She has to live in other people's houses. She's a governess. Even a governess can have feelings. <gasps> Look, Miss Brigmore. What is it? Well, it's a lichen. No, it's not. When I first came to Highbanks Hall, Miss Constance Farrington was a well-mannered, polite little girl. I wonder what happened to her. Miss Bridmore, there's someone watching us. I saw someone on the opposite bank. I thought... There's no one here for miles and miles. It's time to go back now. We thought you'd all go in the carriage. Well, no, we had some business to settle. No, see, there's been a fire in the drawing room. There is, Miss Brickmore. Good. Well, let's come in. In your hands. Richard, did you go for a walk this morning? No, I didn't. I wish to God I had. The cart's ready. Madam. You're going to pay back every penny that you owe me. Or I'll see that you're thrown out of your clubs and barred from society. Come on, Weir. He knows the alternative. You've got until the end of the week. Oh, yes. These little pictures are very nice. But I'm sure they can't 
I'm glad you're staying another day, Sally. I mean, it's so small. What made your and father change his mind? You persuaded him because you wanted to spend some more time with Richard. Oh, look! This man has a mark just like yours. Look, Mr. Armstrong. This man in fancy clothes has a white mark on his head just like the squire's. So he should. He was my great grandfather. Really? Such a young man. Look, Fanny. Who does that remind you of? Richard. He's just as handsome as Richard. Yes, a hundred years ago. More of them about today, of course. <laughs> You'll have a grandson with a Malin streak. Oh, yes. Well, I'm waiting. Tell me, Miss Farrington, what do you and your sister intend doing when your cousin is married? She's going to look after her old Uncle Thomas, aren't you, my dear? Huh? Yes. Yeah. You go and get me another glass of port. And little Connie's going to marry a duke. Ah! Oh, Richard! Yes. Your friend's gone. Uh, just this minute. Thank God for that. Maybe we'll see more of you now, eh? I want to talk to you. Me? You don't want to talk to me. Not when there's a pretty woman in the house. <laughs> Thank you. Luncheon is solved. Ah. Hello, Mama. Hi. I saw Mr. Taggart's car today. Hi. It's Friday. Quite aye. Right. Don't see to the horse. Hi. Where's Dad? He's upstairs. Hi. I wish Don and Dad, you know. Hi. If he goes off on his own sometime, it's because it's because he's like that. It's all right, it's done. Mm -hmm. You mend that wall over Café Louis? Now, uh, Donald did. Yeah. The beast can go down there in summer. Uh, this is cold. Yeah. How are you, Matthew? I'm all right, Dad. I'll have to go into Hexham to see the doctor. You'd better come too. Like a hospital here, isn't it? Hush! <laughs> Lucky Don's here to look after the farm. Come over here, lad. That was me, Grandad. Here's me, Dad. Here's me. And here's you. He's not in our family. It's a more satisfactory explanation than your indebtedness to the bank. <laughs> I've been trying to talk to you all day. Let it wait. It won't wait, Father. I've got to go to London tomorrow. Uh, what on earth are you doing? State business. Why can't you settle down for five minutes? Uh, Father, go to Newcastle with the Armstrongs if you must. Then go on from there. Talk to Fanny. I need 200 pounds. Uh, I've got to have 200 pounds. <laughs> it's a debt. A debt of honor. Don't pay it. A fool to gamble and an even bigger fool to lose. I didn't lose. You won and you still owe money. I paid back what I won. 
You cheated. They lied. You cheated. It, it was a trick, Father. The weir kept losing and couldn't pay up. Uh. He fixed it with Lennox to accuse me, to, to threaten me, that if I didn't pay back what they'd lost, they... Well, you know what they'd do. You say he couldn't pay up. Uh, that's right. And they wanted you to pay out what he couldn't pay up. You're a cheat and a liar. Bad luck to you. It's only 200, Father. We've got 200, haven't you? Read it. Carrier brought it today. There'll be a man here from the bank tomorrow. No, lad. I haven't got 200 pounds. You mortgage high banks. You borrowed money on my inheritance! Don't you shout at me, lad. What the devil do you think we've been living on? It's gone. We say here, then let him give this man some security of payment. It's gone! Security? What security? I've got no money, I've got no coal. Frank Armstrong's got all the coal. But we can give them security. We can. We can give them... Fanny Armstrong's diary. Huh? Yeah. Oh, no. Fanny Armstrong's diary. <laughs> That'll do it, lad. Then you can send a letter to your friends in London inviting them to the wedding. Fanny Armstrong. Fine girl. Reminds me of your mother. She is not in the least like when I... Fanny Armstrong's diary, lad. For the workhouse. For you. And for me. Barbara, what's going to happen? If Dick marries Fanny Armstrong, hmm? I don't know. I expect I'll get married. Do you want to get married? No. It's all right for you. You can stay with Uncle Tommy. I wouldn't mind. <laughs> Only I don't know anyone. I suppose if Dick and Fanny lived here, we'd meet a lot of different people. Yes. You couldn't stay with Uncle Thomas forever. What would you do then? I don't know. A governess. Like Miss Bridmore. Perhaps. Oh. oh, but she'd be an old maid without any children. Yes. Dad. What is it? Tales of fashionable life. Where did you get it? Hexham. We watch it a boat, man. No. You know. Love affairs. <laughs> When I go to Exxon, I don't read about it. I do it. Last market day. Why, I? With? Factory lass. I give her a shilling that belonged to your dad. Those girls we saw today look bonny. They're my cousins, Maddie. They're my cousins from the hall. They're not. They are. 
Oh, and don't pretend. Just a talk, man. It's like me sometimes, pretending I'm well. I run and fall over. My blood's as good as theirs, <coughs> Maggie. I could do it with one of them. <coughs> Here, come on, sit up, man. Sit up. <coughs> oh, you're right. <coughs> you're right, man. I could. I'm as sick as you are, remember? this morning and see if I can get some figures from him for the man for the bank. So you fix it up with Fanny Sharp. She might say no. What the devil do you think everyone's sitting around waiting for, huh? What's the matter with you? Fanny Armstrong. Every time I look at her. There are some other ways of doing it than face to face. Oh. Remember, it's Fanny Armstrong's money or nothing. Good morning, Frank. You're my son, aren't you? Dick's asking to have a word with you. Where's Fanny? Open the room. Shall we go into breakfast? Bring some whiskey. Have you seen Fanny? No, Richard. Laugh while you can. Uh, hey! Come on, Richard! Sorry, Fanny. Oh, isn't it romantic? Just like Romeo and Juliet. Juliet was on the balcony, Mother. Yes, that's right, dear. Well, get on up there. Coming down. Richard! Richard! Who huh? said she was coming up? Get on up to him and keep him there. Good morning. Fanny, what? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, sir. It's too damn crowded here. But let's go downstairs. I've always wanted to ask. Listen. Oh, for God's sake! Well, funny. Cash down. Have you got to tell me? Securities. Have you asked yet? I was just going to. Wait and see if you've got my permission. Get down your knees. It's cost me. No, what? It's a man you want. It's a money bullet. Do it, Fanny, my dear. Don't keep Dick in suspense, huh? Your father says I'm not to keep you in suspense. Uh, yes. Uh, let's go in here. like an old married couple already. I've just been telling Miss Farrington I've never seen two people so well matched. Have you spoken to your father, Fanny? And you, Richard? Uh. Well, I shall just go upstairs and finish packing, and when I come down, everything will be settled. Will you come and help me, my dears? Uh, sit down.
If you don't want to, Richard, I understand. Sit down. Oh, of course I want to. You want me to, don't you? If you don't just say so. No obligation, money back guaranteed. A straightforward, that's me. I love you. There, that's out. Honesty is the best policy. Well? Do you love me, damn it? That's it, then. You don't like all this romantic stuff, do you? I think I'll come with you to Newcastle, then I can get the early train to London to... What's the matter? It's settled, isn't it? Fanny! Uh, Fanny, please! Uh, look here. We, we can't disappoint everyone, can we? I don't know what your people would say. It'll turn out all right, you'll see. What do you say? You haven't asked me, Richard? Oh, uh, what do you want? Somebody at the door, sir? Get on it! Could you step inside and wait a minute, please, sir? Um, my father's in the dining room. Um, we'll go out into the garden. Oh, would you like to go out into the garden, my dear? If you'd like to, Richard. Under the trees. Yes. Oh. <laughs> I'm a banker. His name's Cotton. Have you asked her yet? As good as. For God's sake. Um, the garden. Really quite unnecessary. There'll be a letter in the post explaining the whole thing. We'll, we'll go out the back way. I might as well get to know the house. And uh, this leads out to the orchard. We'll clear all this out. Come on. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Don't mind me, sir. Just get on with it. Well, of course, I'm sure, Mr. Dunn. I can read. Newcastle Bank in big letters. You see, I heard the squire and Mr. Dick talking about Miss Fanny this morning. No, the squire said, it's all money or nothing, and he's got to marry her. But, oh, Dick says he cannot stand a look at her. <laughs> well, you cannot blame him for that. Oh, no. Newcastle Bank. <laughs> Aye, but he's out there now, lovey-dovey in her. <laughs> and the man from the bank arrives. Take it back! Take back what you said, then! But then get out! You're finished here! Just a minute. Look, I'm sorry, Wait. miss. I didn't know you were... Miss, get, get out of here! Oh. Get, don't you push! Aye! <laughs> Master Dick, he's got a wife and children. Oh. Get out the bloody way! Come here, wait that out! You get in your carriage and go back to Newcastle. Get off my property! Get off! Get off! Was an, an accident. Yeah. You all saw it. The accident. Come on. 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 You've killed him, lad. That's the end of it. You've done your chances. And you've done me! Me. Nima Mallon. Mr. Richard Mallon's not here. No, he's in Durham jail. Thomas. Court order Nima Thomas Mallon. Back door. Keep an eye on the goods and chattels. Not 
Call the master. That's where the crime took place. Yes, but on accident. Anyway, you didn't kill him. Won't leave a name in Athens. What's up? Thomas Marlowe. Did you hear that? That's going to be his defense at his trial, I should think. An accident. Well, we don't need more accidents. We keep your eyes open. Without my son, I'm raising the veil. It's a damn disgrace putting a man in prison before he's had a chance to defend himself. Thomas Mallon? Squire Mallon. What the devil's that? Order of possession. Newcastle Bank has foreclosed on your mortgage. Obtained an order of the county court distraining all properties, goods, and chattels appertaining to the house and lands entitled high banks in the county of Northumberland. From now on, it is an offence for you or anyone else to remove any of the said goods and chattels from this said house and property. God save the Queen. What do you mean? Get out of my house. It isn't your house anymore. That's what I mean. Nothing to go out. It's my house! Whatever was all that, Mr. Dunn? The end of High Banks. The end? Well, what are you on about? The bums are in. Yes, miss. Have they started to make an inventory? For what, miss? A list of things. Yes, miss. Where's the squire? He's in the big front room, miss. Well, come down with me. I, I want you to do exactly as I tell you. The bums are down in the hall. Now, listen to me. <laughs> I want you to collect every small thing of value that you have. But what's happened, Miss Bridmore? The bailiffs are here. That means that your uncle is bankrupt. We haven't much time. But what are they doing here? They take possession of the house and of everything in it. Everything that you love and you treasure, they sell it to pay the debts. We haven't much time. Once the thing's written down, it's not. Oh, I'm going to have a look. No, Connie, don't be silly. Well, then I'm going to see Uncle Tom. If he wants us, he'll send for us. You'd better do what she says. Fetch your brooch. But we live here. It's our home. All we have is what Aunt Armour left us. Connie, do you remember when Father was still with us? He had to leave somewhere very quickly. It reminds me. It was mother's. Father. Fetch your brooch, Connie, and your ribbon box. Well, what's she going to do with them? I don't know. It's stop the bailiffs from getting them. Oh, Connie. I'm sorry to intrude when you have company, but I have a matter to draw to your attention that will not wait. It is of the most intimate nature regarding the girls. It's about Miss Barbara and Miss Constance. Their behavior towards me is impossible. This morning they called me a name. I hardly dare repeat it. A bitch, Mr. Mallon. Not now. It must be dealt with at once. If you do not speak to your nieces immediately, I shall leave your employ. Not now, damn you, woman. You saw it. You heard him, didn't you? Did you hear him swear at me? It's none of my business. Of course it is yours, but... Well... I'm sorry, sir, but I've got to tell the truth, haven't I? I heard him, missus. Me too, miss. <laughs> I shall leave this house immediately. Do you hear me, sir? I'm handing him my notice, and Mary Peel is going with me.
You're better off without her. Let them all go. And you will pay me a whole year's salary and last year's salary, which I'm sure you're well aware is still owing to me. You've got a surprise for me, Joy. Oh, that's it, Steve. In your drawers, in your bodices, just as quick as you can. And for the rest. Oh, yes. For the rest, we'll just. Then we'll just have to see. Stand quite still. Let you get in the way. Come in, Abby. <laughs> what will we do if we're caught? Go to prison. We'll see Richard. This thing will be still belong to Uncle Thomas. What are we doing with him? Keeping them safe for him, I hope. Oh, now, cloaks, bonnets. But where? If the house has gone, the estate and farm will have gone too. We can go to the village. I know. We can go to Newcastle and put them in the bag, Mary Peel. Yes, Miss Wigmore. We can take our baskets. Yes, you can take them, but make sure they're empty. Do you think we will be searched? You will not be. Good. Now your bonnet. I can't walk. Come on, Connie. Here, Mrs. Wigmore. Oh. Good. Now, just as far as the front door, look as natural as possible. making his own arrangements. Watch the pillar. Uh, Dan, would you ask for the pony and trap to be sent round for us, please? I'm sorry to say it's been put on the list. We cannot leave the steel. Then you must walk. Wait. Wait a minute. Where do you think you're going? A walk. We were going for a drive, but you prevented that. You know who I am, then? Well, these are the young ladies. You shouldn't say things like that to anyone. It's a disgrace having a business here. Well, I'm not surprised. Some of the things that have been happening here. I thought you were leaving. At the end of the week. Now, we're going for a long walk to teach us manners. You can't stop us going out. I can't stop you taking anything with you. As you can see, we have nothing. You'd do much better to search him. Oh. Just let's take a look then, shall we? Are you all right, Mary Peel? Why, well, I miss, but it's a funny place to keep a teapot. You might have told us we were going to the cottage. You would never have walked this far. We've never walked there before. Barbara, you're going to have to do many things we've never done before. See, there's a cart coming from Wolfford Farm way. It'll be Mr. Radlett. Oh, will he give us a ride? Oh, he'll not be going our way. Anyway, they're a bit funny up there. How do you mean funny? It's not quite what they should be. We will walk on slowly. We'll pretend we're admiring the view. Look at the peak.
She could throw him. Thank you, Mary Peel. Do you think you could find some wood to make a fire? Yes, Miss Fredmore. I don't know what she was worrying about mine. He was only after the beauty. Constance, please, will you go upstairs and tell Mary Peel to open the windows? What for? We're not going to live here, are we? We are, if we have to leave the hall. But, Miss Brigmore, we can't possibly live here. May I ask you how much money your aunt left you? Fifty pounds a year between us. Then you can't live anywhere else. Barbara, you're very fortunate to have a place like this. They're all rubbish. Oh, there are two bedrooms and a bit. Mary Peel can have the bit. That leaves one bedroom for you and Constance. Will you live with us? Excuse me, Miss Bigmore, but if things are as bad as you say, we couldn't afford to pay you. I was about to say that the other bedroom will have to do for your uncle and your cousin Richard when he's released. Oh, no. Uncle Thomas and Richard. If your uncle has lost everything, where is he to go? He looked after you when you were children. You should return his generosity in the best way that you can. Richard, it's all his fault for shooting that man. It's true, we owe Uncle Thomas more than we can ever pay. And even Richard. Perhaps for a short while. Until they can arrange something else. But you will come, won't you, Miss Bridmore? You must understand. I have my own life to lead. I'm sorry, Barbara, I don't know. It's time for us to start back. Mind, I'll stay with you, Miss Barbara. You must be crazy to want to live here. Well, so was your old auntie at the end. Crazy. Gone with the rest of them. Where'd you get the bottle? I put it away some time ago, sir. I'm sorry about what's happened. To us, Master Richard. Oh, he's finished. Not a chance of getting him off without money. Last of the line. Has everyone gone? Where are my nieces? 
And that governess woman. Miss Brickmore took the young ladies for a walk this morning, sir. I thought it strange they're not returned. Leaving out of the way. She's going. Girls can stay here until... What am I going to do? Where am I going to go? Oh, well done. When the young ladies come back, tell them I want to see them. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Please. as well go as you said you would. All the others have gone. Tell the girls I want to see them. There's no need to disturb them now. I had a very long walk today to the cottage at Carfell. That old woman's place. They'll be able to manage there on the income they have between them. So, you know what's up. All they've got is tub and take them. Fifty pounds a year. Five pounds more than a governess's salary. As I said, they'll be able to manage on that, and so will you if you're careful, no extravagances. What do you mean, me? Naturally, they'll expect you to stay there with them until you can make your other arrangements, you and your son. These ladies own arrangements. They will expect that you'll want to have him released on bail. There's no money for bail. They don't expect anything. They don't know anything. It's you, isn't it? And what do you know? My father was a gentleman. This is not my first acquaintance with the bailiffs. What do you know, Miss Governess? How unobservant some people are, Mr. Lowell. You took him this morning under the bailiff's nose. Will you be coming to the cottage with us? I shall not leave the Miss Farringtons until I find a more satisfactory position. Good night, sir. Today. The hall wasn't sold. Never got near the asking price. Got another house full of furniture. Not in my house. Ever? With lots of books. Hey, there were all sorts there, Matty. There was books and pictures, silver, glass, china, guns, rods, chairs, tables. There was one lot, a six stag dens, and another, a fifty chamber pots. <laughs> fifty! Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth. I've got a judgment. 
Didn't see none of them at the auction. Well, you wouldn't have wanted to go. All the things that were theirs. It was a judgment, I tell you. Aye, aye. All the folk that worked at the hall are out of a job. Mr. Saget was telling me the family's moved into that cottage on Carfell. There's me call to stop by here and gossip. I mean, it's all very well in summer, but no place for a family in winter. Some people have no sense at all. It's not right they should have to live there. Why not, Matthew? We are all equal in the sight of the Lord. Let them learn humility and patience. <laughs> then they can be as miserable as us. Dad? If it's a bad winter, can we take my bite of food from over here? I forbid you to go near that place. The Lord has seen fit to cast them down, and they'd make company for decent men. Bye, that's canny. We couldn't talk to them before, because they were too good for us. And we cannot see them now, because they're too bad for us. You stick to your own sort, Donald, or you'll come to a bad end. We're all equal in the sight of the Lord. I'm not going to argue with the devil. Do you know, I've never seen inside the hall. There's nothing in it now, ma'am. Oh, I bought it for you. Something bonny. What's that? It's bonny. Oh, isn't that bonny? You had no right to gear that. You've never given ma'am anything bonny in her life. Except maybe it's Matty. It is a cheat. Nobody wants to buy old stuff. They didn't take enough to pay a quarter of what you had the back. They didn't sell the house. You've got cheating on the brain. Oh, no, Father, you're not going to swing this one on me. You've cheated me out of what was mine. Damn you. Please, will you stop swearing? Get out! Damn you again. Oh, that damn woman, you're damned. Freedom! Thank you, Mr. Marion, but you're still swearing. Don't laugh, Constance. I think I'd rather be back in Durham jail. The trial's next month. You can be sure the bank will have the best barrister in the circuit. What am I going to do? Any one of those will buy you a good man when the time comes. She's a clever woman. Not bad looking either, eh? You're going soft in the head. And you're soft somewhere else, or you'd have married Fanny Armstrong and be living on a coal mine. I can't see anymore. And there's still a little light. Besides, I don't see the point in writing to anyone. What am I going to write about? Is there anything to drink? Miss Brigmore says it isn't necessary. Well, can we have a light in here? Not until 8 o'clock, when we go to bed. <sighs> I shall go mad. Mary Peel says that Aunt Armoral, who used to live here, went mad and ran about on the fell wrapped in a white sheet. She's an idiot. Mary Peel says that people passing by at night have seen something white moving on the fell. Probably a sheet. Sheets don't go. Ooh! Ooh! Stop it, Connie. <laughs> You're not frightening anyone. Yes, I am. Me. Oh, good. Bedtime. Good night, Miss. Good night, Paul. Good night, Mary Peel. Right. I'm not used to sleeping with a man in the room. Damn shame about the auction. Everyone got a look at my past and nobody made me an offer for it. Have you a past? It's the last thing any governess would admit to, Mr. Marion. Governess? A miss? An unattached woman? No past? And not much future. I'm alone, yes. It's bad for you. Saints of the church would not agree with you. Do you know the first thing that God ever said to man? Be fruitful and multiply. 
I can't give you very high marks for religion, I'm afraid. No. But there's nothing much wrong with my multiplication. Is that why you stayed with us, because you were alone? I've been with your nieces long enough to feel concerned about their future. Uh, I should have done more for them. Perhaps I will, when the house is sold and the bank's paid off. And I shan't forget you either, Anna. Mr. Bigmore. Oh, no. Now we're friends, Anna. Sleep here. I've been keeping you up. My Mark, do you know the story? First, Thomas Mallon broke the seventh commandment, and God put a mark on him that every time he did it, one of his hairs would turn white. It's been that way ever since. I'm that son of mine. I must ask you to stop swearing in front of the girls. You're quite right, Anna. It's difficult enough for you. I'll say good night. Good night, Anna. Good night. Thomas.
Oh, he's gone all right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It was for you. All that I had left of what you saved for me. Now he's taken them. I have nothing left to give you. Won't Richard have to come back for the trial? Richard's run away from the trial. Bail money. Mary Peel, will you make some tea, please? Constance go and finish dressing. I want to talk to you. I'm going for a walk on the staff. I'm glad Richard is gone. He won't come back. hear anything at all? Nothing. I must have stepped right through it. God damn him. Shh. I'm sorry, Anna. That's all I can say. I should have left him in jail. That's all he's fit for. You couldn't have known it was going to happen. You must make the best of it. Jim. Yes. Yes. Just the four of us. It would be quicker if you took two at a time. I don't want to be quick. And Miss Brigmore says that sarcasm is the lowest form of wit. Why do you think she's staying with us? She's got nowhere else to go. She hasn't even tried to leave. Oh, I don't know. Perhaps she likes it here. Don't see anyone. Don't meet anyone. No one to talk to. I talk to Mr. Taggart every Friday when the cart goes by. And we're having very interesting conversations. Oh, I don't know. She tells us what to do so much. I think perhaps she depends on us. Perhaps. I think that was a cabbage. Asleep by now. Anna. Oh, Anna. How many times? Never. Don't lie. Never with you.
I would have to go out. Oh, she will be very quiet when she wants to. Miss Barbara's coming, Miss. Look at your dress. I just washed her. I went for a walk. I'll go up and change. There's no time. If you run, you might just catch Mr. Taggart at the end of the lane. Where are we going? To the hall. Constance knows why. We may have to walk back. So hurry. Come on, Barbara. Where is Uncle Thomas? In his room. I'm going without you. Is he ill? No, of course not. Why on earth should he be ill? Because he's old. Funny and from the look of her clothes, she's been up the peak and back. I must have slept very heavily. I didn't hear her go out. And it's not stealing. <sighs> Seems ages ago. It's only a few months. Miss Frigmore used to Pardon. give us lessons here. I want to go away. I want to leave the cottage and go away somewhere. I live on my share of the money. You can have the cottage. You can't. Miss. Why not? I thought of that. And I asked Uncle Thomas, and he said it would take at least four pounds a week to live decently in London. Why did you want to go away? Why did you? There's too many of us living in the cottage. It's Uncle Thomas. He takes up too much room. And he smells. Look, if I can manage on what I've got, would you mind very much? But, Barbara, if you went away... We could both go. What would they have to live on? It's not fair. It's our cottage and our money. And we can't escape from it. Oh, it's all empty and horrible. If it's all empty and horrible, why do you keep looking at it? There's only one trapped in there. Looks <gasps> like Richard. It can't be. Look at his hair. Good morning, Miss Parrington. Good morning, Miss Parrington. You're trespassing. You too. And stealing. Who are you? That's not very polite, is it? I know who you are. Everybody knows who we are. We lived here. Ah, now you're living over at Carthel. I've seen you watching us. I've had my eyes on you for a long time. You ask your uncle. What have you to do with Mr. Mallory? He looks just like Richard. Come on, come. He's following us. Stop, I've got 
from Worcester Farm. Are you from Worcester Farm? That's right, miss. My name is Matthew Radlett. I'm Miss Farrington. Will you help us, please? That man is following us. I think he means to harm us. Why, right, miss, I'll help you. Oh, thank you. Ah, you off to Carfell? Would you like a ride? Yes, please. We'd be very grateful, Mr. Radlett. Thank you. Come on. Come on. <coughs> He'll not harm you. Ask me, Brother Donald. He's the last one in the world who would harm you. Next time you send that girl to the village, get me some brandy. We can't afford it. Damn your afford. Am I the master here or you? You made me, Anna. Gave me back my pride. Made a man of me again. It's all yours. That girl is as daft as a sheep. One bottle will ruin her. When I think of the amount I must have drunk, and the women, and no fools. We go where nature drives us. Not fools, not wise, not saints, not demons. Not what we think we are, but what we are. Men go on breeding men. And is that your function in life? A bottle of brandy costs five shillings. The cab coming, miss. This is the girls, but who is that with them? to ask because it's not our house. Well, it is ours, but Uncle Thomas is staying with us and we must ask him. I'm sure he'll say yes. What's your dad going to say, Matty? Thou shalt not mix with the gentry. And here you are, cap in hand, come calling on him. I'm not. Happened by chance. Dad won't mind. What about you? Why, man, I arranged it, Matty. Don't. Why not? We don't know who they are. Matthew and Donald Bradlett. What's all this nonsense about not knowing who they are? I know who they are. Whatever has happened to your manners? Honestly, go and ask the young men to come in. You forget it's our house. You treat us like children. But please don't. Oh, let them come in. What does it matter? It might be funny. Yes, it is funny. You'll see. Come in. Come on. Hello, Dad. 
show you what the people they are. Not one of them. The Headleys, the Ferriers. Not one has been to see us since we left the hall. Well, I think it's disgusting. It shows what sort of people they are. enough attention before. Well, I don't want to see any of them ever again. Oh, come on, Barbara. If you folded it properly, it would be all right. It would be nice to see someone. Matthew and Donald Radless have been coming almost every week. Oh, them. I like Matthew. I think Donald tries to be... Well, we all know what Donald's thinking about. It's Carlos. Sorry, the Radlets. Uh, you're to go in, you're to go out. Oh, Mary. Is Miss Bidmore with you? She's gone to meet Mr. Taggart, see if there's any letters. Good afternoon, Miss Constance. Good afternoon, Matthew. Would you like to come and help me with the washing? Aye. It's not bad stuff, lad. Come in, Barbara. Don't hang around. Don bought us some things for the larder. That's nothing much, Mother. Oh, I'm very grateful to your parents, but I'm... No, wish... it's not them. It was money. No, oh, lad, it was you. He killed a pig. There's an art to killing a pig. The secret is, once you've started, not to stop. Please, won't you come and sit down, Mr. Radlett? Miss Bidmore will be back soon. Look, uh, if there's anything special you want, you've only got to ask. We've got most things up at the farm. It's very thoughtful of you that we manage. Miss Brignall manages. Oh, aye. And what would a lady like you know about that? I am learning. I admire that. He admires you, did you hear? Yes, Uncle. Well, say something then. Talk to him. There was always a vanity about these Farringtons. He's as good as you are, better, better off. I have no doubt of that, please, Uncle. If it's his birth you're worried no. about, I... I would not judge anyone by something for which they were not responsible. Better? He's an old devil. I don't know how you put up with him. I'd pitch him out the barn with the beasts. Would you? No. No, to tell you the truth, I'm a bit proud of him. How big is Wolf the Farm? About the same size as Home Farm down the valley. Except ours is fell land. Well, not the same as real. Ah, uh, the old man, my father, but he's not up to much. And as for Matty, our mum and I say when, when Matty goes out to look after the cows, but well, the cows are looking after Matty. What's she like, your mother? Your mum? One day you'll have to come over and meet her.
shouldn't pick them, you know. Why not? Well, when you pick them, they die. I wish you hadn't said that. You haven't much to say for yourself, have you? Sorry. Donald's the one for talking. Are you really brothers? We're closer than real brothers. Because we're different. That's not very difficult. Barbara and I are different and we're real sisters. No. What I meant was... If we were sister and brother, we couldn't be real close now, could we? If we wanted. If we... We couldn't be like in, in love if we were brother and sister. We aren't. No, we aren't. It's always, yes, Miss Constance, no, Miss Constance. And the one time I ask you to chaperone, Miss Constance, you fall asleep. I never, Miss. Then how did they manage to walk away without you two? Well, me eyes were open, but they weren't looking. Should be all right with Maddie, Miss. That's not the point. We try to keep up some standards of behavior, even here. She won't have gone far. She cannot, not Maddie. When did that start? Oh, the doctor said he were born with it. Ah, bad blood. All the more reason not to go straying with the boy. Constance won't do anything wrong. How can you even think it? Of course you won't. My concern was that Matthew might have a coughing fit and Constance wouldn't know what to do. What were you thinking of, Barbara? They're coming. A lot of trouble over nothing. We'll be getting back over to Wolfpool. Already? Well, come and see us again. You make my father angry, that, if I do. Your father will come and blow your head off if you don't. Go on, my lad. Goodbye, Miss Farrington. And thank you. Thank you, Donald. Goodbye, Miss. And Matty's not such a bad lad now, is he? <laughs> is he, Constance? Come on, Matty. Matty, down. Here you go. What did he mean? What's the matter? How can you ask? Have you forgotten everything I taught you? No. What have I done wrong? No lady would trust herself alone with a gentleman, let alone a farmer's son. What are we now? I didn't hear you, Barbara. What are we now? It's a question of birth and upbringing. His is the same as Donald's. Is he a gentleman? Is it all right if he's a gentleman? I didn't say that. What am I supposed to have done wrong? You've got me into bother. Be quiet, my little. 
You forfeited my respect. That's what you've done. Yes, Constance. You have forfeited Miss Brigmore's respect. And there can be nothing worse than that. No poverty, no disgrace, nothing shameful. So long as you have Miss Brigmore's respect. Oh, women. You're like greyhounds, always tearing at something. By God, if there isn't a hair, you'll start one somewhere. Now then, our Matty, did you have a nice day? Hi, ma'am. Where did you go? Go on. Tell us where you went today. You know, ma'am. Oh, oh, I. You and Don went to see the young lady. And you took a piece of pork and some puddings. You'll take on them. Why, I did. Not you. Him. What was their names? It's Farrington. Backer. I'll not have to backer in the house. Where did you go then? Not far. On the film. What was she like? Well, she's... She runs around a lot. What did you do? I watched her. Is that all? Did you hear that, ma'am? Yeah. Oh, Matty takes a girl out for the first time in his life, and all he can do is watch her while she runs about. Well, now, don't you be jealous of him, Donald. Don? <laughs> He's got other plans, haven't you, Don? What plans? There are two sisters, ma'am. Told you not to go there. Do you reckon we can marry one of them each? Come on then, Matty, why not? Not each. Why not, ma'am? You know why not. It's the Lord's will. Does it say that in the Bible? And God smote Matthew Radford with consumption. You give it to him, Father. You. If anyone's to blame, it's you. Your dad gave you your sickness, just like my dad gave me mine. You love the girl. You marry the girl. To hell with him. Nine o'clock, I thought it was later. I think I can see the peak from here. It's impossible to see the peak from that window, Constance. Then there must be another one over there. The cloud with the moon behind it. It does rather. In a dream, perhaps. Do you have dreams, Miss Brigmore? Yes. Do you, Uncle Thomas? I know what you dream about. You dream about going back to the hall, don't you? Poor Uncle Thomas. Oh, I am. Dark dreams you wouldn't understand. Shall I tell you?
There's a cattle shed. I go into this cattle shed. There's a bull tethered in one of the stalls. I know him. He's from High Banks. Fine, big fella. Won all the prizes hereabouts. And served half the cows in the county. <laughs> <laughs> Great black bull. With a white streak down his back. This is a joke. What happened to him then? I ate him. This is a joke. Can I go for a walk on the cell? Of course not. It's bedtime. I haven't finished reading yet. Don't you have time for reading tomorrow? Barbara? I'm sorry, Uncle Thomas, but this is my house. And now that I am 21, I will not be told what I may do and when I may do it. And I would like you to think of something else. Constance and I no longer need a governess. I'm very grateful to Miss Brigmore, and she may stay here until she finds another situation. But I really must... <laughs> Good night, Constance. Good night, Uncle Thomas. Good night, Connie. Good night, Miss Brigmore. Good night, Constance. Barbara. Did you really send Miss Brigmore away? I don't know. If you did, have you thought about it? If you did, there'd only be Uncle Thomas. Yes. Oh, God. How can I get away from here? I don't think they're up there.
find them. They've taken the horse. A miss and the squire have gone down the lane looking for them. The other one's locked herself away outside. Poor Mary Peel, it's not her fault. I wish you wouldn't. What? Bring him this. <laughs> There's no harm in that. There is. You don't know him. It makes him forget his, his age, his circumstances. I'd have thought that would have been good for him. But if you say so. I only brought it because I thought, well, it might make things easier for you. No, it doesn't. You lost the most, didn't you? When you had to leave the hall. Well, he can forget, as you say. He can manage anywhere as long as he can find somebody to live on. Constance. Constance is young enough and bonny enough to be asked for. And she'll say yes to the first man who does. Miss Brigmore now. No, please. Don't say any more. I won't. Because I can't make head in the tail of her. But I know she doesn't feel it as much as you. I don't matter. I used to watch him, you know. From the first day I knew what I was. I'll be up to peak, just for a look at the hall. Sometimes, I'd go down into Highbanks Wood, just for the chance of a look at him. I saw you once. I saw you. I thought you were my cousin Richard. And you found I was your cousin Donald? Yes. My cousin Donald. Well, I got one thing to thank my old dad for. I never used to mind. But I thank him now. You thank him? For bringing down his house so I could enter it. We was all brought up on the Bible, see? Mr. Radlett must be a good man. I wonder where they've got to now. Shall we go out? Constance can be so irresponsible at times. bad as you. I hope not. Miss Brigmore said that people went to live in warm countries. Ah, there must be rich people then. Come along. It doesn't mean that you can't do anything. No. Well then. I like reading. Reading books. With other people. What do you like doing with other people? You tell me. Lots of things. I 
lives of the people. Not all of them. But one. What? Kissing. Who with? I'm not going to tell you. William Headley. Oh? Matthew. What's the matter with you? I don't know why they're worried about us being together. We're never going to do anything wrong. We could have brought Mary Peel with us. The sun touches me. That's when we must go back. Wonder why I can't have a child? It was too late. You think so? In your mind, you'd settled for chastity. You couldn't change my mind. Man can't change a woman's mind. Only she can do that. And his, too. You... You persuaded me, Thomas. No, my dear. I hardly knew who you were. Miss Brigmore, the governess. And then? Then you were here. You found me irresistible, you fell in love with me, you might have said so. I was available. So was I. What a beast you are. You have as much feeling as a, a beast, a great beast. Yes, I disgust you, I know that. I see it in your face. When I please you most, I disgust you most. Please myself. You disgust your. And love. In all this maze of feeling, where is love? Are you all self? Is there not one atom of love in that whole universe of yours? Oh, Anna. I have seen the spring. I've felt passion. I've been driven by my nature until I've stood and cried against it. But I've never seen or felt what you call love. That is what I call love. There is a little hope for us. When the girls leave the cottage, which they will. Can't you see that? Oh, you're so blind, Thomas. Then. Then we'll have a child. You'll see.
find them anywhere. I'm afraid they must be lost. Marty won't be lost, miss. Come in, Barbara. Stand in the doorway. Do you want a drink? No, sir, thank you. What is it? Mary Peel can make some tea. Mary Peel! Can you think what might have happened to them? They'll be all right, miss. It'll be dark before we get home, mine. It is thoughtless of Constance. It's not the first time. Mary Peel! She shut herself in again. Oh, how ridiculous. Oh, sit down, Barbara. Well, I, <clears throat> I do think that your brother might have shown us more respect and consideration. I think we've always shown you both. Oh, for heaven's sake. When we lived at the hall, we weren't even allowed to know they existed. Well, things have changed naturally, but there are still principles of behavior oh, wherever one lives. Drink more, please. Will you restrain yourself? Oh, yes, I will. I will restrain myself. Women. You'll never understand. I know you very well. I taught you. I'm responsible for what you think of me. And for my own suffering at this moment. I would ask you to take one thing into account. It would never have happened if we hadn't had to come here. It's not my fault that we're here. I taught you to be fair. I didn't ask you to come here. It suited you. And now you treat us as if you were mistress of the house as well. You needed me. I think you still need me. No, Miss Brigmore, you need us. Yes, perhaps I do. You need him. that I'm not perfect. You were perfect. You were so perfect that we loved you. Don't you understand? Well, Barbara, it, it only seems so now. You remember how happy you were at the hall? I hated the hall! Hunting parties, drinking parties. Young men brought for our approval. These women. Only you meant anything to me. And Constance? I wanted to leave the hall. Coming here, I didn't mind. Even he was bearable. So long as you didn't change. I did. So quickly. Oh, no. I saw you! the most terrible thing in the world. Yes. Two people who love one another. Two animals. Find some comfort with each other. That isn't what you taught me. No. Constance needs someone to look after her. She can't live here alone with him. Oh, why him? I, I can only give this the scullery maid's excuse. He made me.
I'll go away. No, Barbara. I have to. I can't go on living with you. I'll go away somehow. Alone? You will not be... You will not be happy if you marry Donald Radley. Whatever I have to do. You mustn't go away, Barbara. There will be no more occasion for it. I promise you. I promise you, Barbara. I promise you. Now I know what you meant, Anna. The girls will leave us. Connie's ready. Uh, the sick boy will not do for her. I wouldn't give him more than a year. That's good for Don. It means he'll get wolf for Barbara. Well, she'll find it hard to do better. You mustn't marry Barbara. Why not? I won't say no. Neither will she. She accepts it'll be for the wrong reason. It will be for her reason. She wasn't made to be a farmer's wife. Don knows how she was brought up. He'll treat her like a lady. She must not be made to marry Donald. What did she say to you when you were up there together? She saw us. Oh, well, she's a human being, isn't she, just like the rest of us? She's a woman. All women are the same. What's the matter with you? Let her go. They can both go and leave us on our own. Thomas, if Barbara does go, I shall go too. With her? She wouldn't want me with her. Anna, think of yourself. Forget these children who will forget you. You know, I don't talk of love, but what life I have left is yours. I promised Barbara. Am I to go on living? Stay for me. What do you think you're up to? Why, Matty, where did you come by that? Oh, that's the ribbon from me bonnet, man. I'm, I'm not coming to church. Right, where are you coming? Dressed like a maypole. You're keeping us from God. I, I thought I'd drive over Carfell. We, we haven't been over for four weeks now. They'll be wondering what's happened to us. Why, our Matty, you're fretting over them. Nah, you won't go there. Even he doesn't want to go there anymore. No reason why I shouldn't. Maybe, maybe you go there after church. Nay, no, cannot. I'm going to ask. Dad, she know all about me. She knows everything about me because I told her. I'm going to ask Miss Constance to marry me. Oh, my son. God have compassion on you. Let me ask. I only want to ask. Don, what will you do, Matty, if she says yes? Don, all is right. You have no right to ask her. If I love her? Most of all, if you love her.
Sadece Atıl. Where are you going? You're going over there, aren't you? Let me come as well. Must you? Let me say goodbye to her. Let me do that. Welcome. I use that to get the burnt bits off the pan. Where'd you get it? Mr. Taggart fetches it up from Hexham. <coughs> when I've got the coppers. How much? Fourpence. Where do you get fourpence? You steal it. Sometimes I save it. So, we're drinking partners. Now hide it, so. Look who's coming. Who is it? It's Matthew and Donald. Oh, we haven't had dinner yet. Her hair won't do for seven. Constant, see if you can find your uncle. Has anyone seen Mary Peel? Let me hear, Miss. Oh, where have you been all the morning? Just out the back way. You see, it wasn't my fault. Are you going off your walk? I was going to look for my uncle. Come along, Miss Nelson. Come in. Good morning, Matthew. morning. Barbara, why don't you ask your guests to sit down? They've had a long ride and they'll be having another one shortly. Please sit down, Donald. No, I'll stand if it's all the same to you. I only came to say... No, Maddy. We'll work for Squire Mallon, if you don't mind. I hope Mr. and Mrs. Radler are both well. And that the reason that you haven't been to see us is... ended. Yes. <clears throat> There's a hair in the pot. Put it on to cook. Ah, 
Well, that took you long enough to come and see us again. I, I have something to no, say. No, Mary. There's no call for you to say anything at all. Now then, sir. You know me and what I am. And how I've been calling on you and the ladies, your nieces. And how I've never made a secret of anything. Well, you know my prospects. And you know theirs. And I dare say I could offer her a better home than the one she's got just now. And, well, I wouldn't have said anything at all if I didn't think there was at least a chance that the young lady might say yes. You want to marry my niece? I'm asking your permission to ask her to marry me, yes. You heard him? Have you anything to say? Thomas. Have you? Ask her. Miss Farrington, I have the honor to ask for your hand in marriage. Will you marry me, Constance? Will you, Connie? Will you? What's all this? She's the one you've been coming to see. Please. But she's the one I'm asking to marry. Donna. Donna, if you're joking. She's free, Marty. Now, isn't she free? She's free to say yes or no. As soon as she's ready. I'll wait. I love her. Yeah, you would love her. Don't worry, Connie, my dear. You don't have to say anything now. I'll be over next Sunday. Matty and me, we have to get back. Matty, <coughs> you don't have to say goodbye now. Don. Barbara, it's big more. Let him bring her here. I'm dancing near kin to him. Do you hear me, Jane? Not another of them, not in my house. I've never said a word against you. I don't know her, Michael. I've never met those folk. Oh, she's his niece. The one Matthew wanted. What must he be feeling now? His brother going to marry her. Did Donald do that? He's got more from Marlon than a streak in his hair. No girl could say no to him. Not my Donald. Is that how it was? He, tell him, is your son. Your father says you're not to bring her here. Don't worry, ma'am. Don't worry. He's got 25 pounds a year. She'll pay your rent. You cannot support her wife. Why not? I support you. 
The girl's near kin to you. Only by marriage. She'll be nearer by another marriage. Matthew was going to ask her. Well, he had his chance. Except all you think of him. He's my brother. He couldn't marry her, but I can. That's the way life is. You make her wait. What? Until he's dead? I'd give him half my life. I couldn't as well if I was him. Don't you understand? He couldn't bring her here. But I can. But can he, Don? He's there. How are you, Matthew? Fine, ma'am. My <coughs> God, that's hot. <coughs> Come on, man. <laughs> I'm unhappy because he shouldn't have asked me. He should have asked Barbara. But I'm not unhappy because he should have asked Barbara and he asked me. Mm. This fellow Radlett's confusing us deliberately. Why? It's in his nature. If he'd made it obvious from the beginning that he admired you, your uncle would never have allowed it. Barbara. Uncle Thomas doesn't like Barbara. So he pursued her the intention of catching you. His uncle didn't say anything afterwards. Donald's his son. You realize that? You must bear that in mind when you make your decision. He's illegitimate. Do you hate him because he asked me instead of Barbara? Barbara would have refused him. Not hate, perhaps dislike, distrust. Shall I refuse him? I can't tell you what to do. Oh, you're very young. I haven't met many young men. William Headley. And Matthew. And a fool and a sick boy. I expect Donald must seem very attractive after them. I expect Uncle Thomas is attractive in the dark. I'm sorry. I understand. I know we shouldn't talk about these things. But I know. I want to be married. Help me. Please. Yeah. Let's pretend we still live here. It's foolish to look back. Do you remember when we came here with Miss Brigmore? What's the use of remembering? Aren't you ever going to grow up? Come on. Come on. Come on. Mind you go. Come on. Come on. Come on. There it is.
What's it like inside, eh? There's nothing in there. You could tell me, couldn't you? What it was like when you was living here and I wasn't. We can't get in. That's no bother. Come on. I'm not going inside. I don't think you should either. It won't do any harm. We might get separated. You're not supposed to be alone with him. He won't do anything. Come this way. We're not engaged yet. I haven't said yes. You don't know anything about... Actually, I'll start with it, And there, the Marlin Christ. What's through there? The dining room. And there? The servants' quarters. The servants' quarters are through there. Where did my dad used to stand? Says you've never been before. Why, you only have to stop here. And you come back to me. I won't. The first one that finds me. had been mine. I'd have killed the man who tried to take it away from me. Cousin Richard did, or nearly did, by accident over there. What happened to Cousin Richard? He ran away to France. Are you going to play this game? What do you think? I think you don't play games in case you lose. This isn't your place, Donald. Just you are. Ever since 
someone proposed to me instead of you. Why should that make me angry? You want to be first in everything. You pretend you don't, but I know you do. Everyone has to do what you want. Me, Miss Brigmore, Uncle Thomas, Donald. Perhaps I want you to marry Donald. You too. wanted Highbanks Hall. You said you didn't, but I know you did. Even if it meant living with Uncle Thomas. You couldn't have Highbanks Hall, so you wanted Wolfborough Farm. <laughs> Wolfborough Farm? Even if it meant living with Donald. I thought you were in love with Matthew. You're not in love with anyone. You told me you were. You don't want anyone to be in love. How foolish you are. Miss Brickmore was in love with Uncle Thomas. You don't know anything. Yes, I do. Mary Peel told me. Mary Peel thinks if you stand on the peak at midnight, you'll get a baby. used to go on in here, I'm wondering. I know what a drawing room is. It's where you go after dinner. Well, it doesn't matter what you call it, does it? It'll all fall down anyhow. You can't decide whether you'd rather own Highbanks or destroy it. Oh, I'd rather own it. This room is full of pictures. There were carpets on the floor. And the furniture came from London. What would you want with a room like this? I'd own it! And I'd destroy it after! I was looking for Connie anyhow. She isn't here. Matthew. Are you in love with Constance? Don's asked to marry him? Doesn't mean anything until she said yes. Some young ladies are asked every day. I know that. From books. She once told me that she was in love with you. Well, that's why I asked. I said that whatever happens, it isn't by chance. Well, it's all by chance, Miss Farkington. I was coming in here, me finding you before finding her. Her not having said yes to Don. Go up the stairs, along the gallery, the last door on the right. Here's your prize. Must have slipped down. That's where we used to sleep. I said if I stopped here, you'd come back to me. You'd come to me. <laughs> 